Welcome to Love and Money Secrets TV. I'm your host, Dame Lillian Walker, and we are answering today more Quora questions. So here's another question that I absolutely love and adore to talk about, and this one in particular says, I saw the future in a dream and it happened. How did this happen? Both the mystics of old, the ancient esoteric wisdom teachings, the alchemists, um, the uh, esoteric teachings from different mystical religions, you know, everything from Judaism to Christianity to Kabbalah to Taoism to Hinduism, to, I mean, it pretty much spans the globe. They all talk about how there is an unseen energy and that with our conscious awareness, we can mold that clay of energy and we can literally alter the reality that we see with our, with our 3D physical eyes. We can move the energy with our 3D, 5D eyes. And you've heard of the pineal gland, the pituitary gland, as well as the, the third eye and so on and so forth. So, I want to really impress upon you how important it is for you to value your imagination. Because oftentimes in the Western culture, and I can only speak primarily from the Western culture because I was born here in California. I'm a United States of America citizen. I'm a third, third or fourth generation American. And the bottom line is, that oftentimes we check things off and say, oh, it's just your imagination, as if your imagination isn't valuable. And the truth of the matter is your imagination is extremely powerful. This camera that I'm using to film this YouTube video and answer this core question was as a direct result of somebody having the imagination they had an idea of what a camera was and it had challenges and it, they decided, gosh, wouldn't it be nice if I had this feature, that feature and this feature. And so then they designed in their imagination first what this particular camera would be, do and have and the features that whatever camera they had before was lacking. And so this solved a problem and it solved, it filled the void of a desire that they had for the existing camera that they had. And so then the, in this particular case, the Canon ADD then was born. And the truth is that everything that exists on this planet is that way. Two people, when they get together and they get married and they decide that they wanna have a family, they have a vision in their mind of they wanna have one, two or three kids. And then they start to think about, gee, what would it be like to have our child? What will our child look like? And then before you know it, they're pregnant, then they have a baby, and now that baby that was just a thought in their mind and was just a desire in their heart comes out into 3D reality. And so everything that exists on this planet is like that. So I want to tell you that the way that you created, because I do believe that you created this, you, you said here, I saw the future in a dream, and your dream is your imagination. It is where you, that's the I in imagination, are using magic. Magic is an acronym. Most people don't know this. Magic is an acronym for manifesting according to God's infinite creation. I'm going to repeat that again. Manifesting according to God's infinite creation. So I, magic, nation, shows action. So you are, you are magicking and you're moving it in motion. That's what my imagination is and so the reason you saw the future in a dream you visualized it first and then it happened so the way it happened was because you took your focused awareness one of the prime directives on this plane of existence across all time dimension space and reality for the planet earth is that you cannot have your free will taken away no one can try to t no one can take your free will away People try to take your free will away, but ultimately 
Nobody. That is something that you were born with. That is your birthright. No one can take that away from you. And so people can try to impose upon you. People can try to control you. In fact, even in the Nazi concentration camps, there's a, there's a book by Viktor Frankl called Man's Meaning. Oh gosh, I'm blanking on the, it's a small little book. I'm blanking on the name of this book. Anyhow, it's a book by Viktor Frankl. And one of the things that he talked about was that, yes, although he was taken against his will, he was sequestered, he was kidnapped, he was taken away along with six million other Jews. And some of them weren't Jews, but they were, there's over six million people that were abducted against their will. So that was not their free will but they were taken against their will and they were incarcerated. And one of the things that Viktor Frankl talked about, which is one of the reasons he attributes to him surviving, was that he knew that even though he was incarcerated physically, that mentally no one could control his thoughts. Of course, the exterior environment, the powers that be, the people, the guards, the soldiers, Hitler, you fill in the blank, we're all trying to control him. However, he knew that they did not control his mind. So in his mind's eye, he would rehearse all sorts of things. He knew that in his mind, he was free. In his mind, he would rehearse. He would rehearse all sorts of different things. He would imagine, he would create, co-create. He was creating a map to the future and he knew that if he continued to create a map to the future, he saw his dream in his imagination, allowed himself without having doubt creep in, and he continued to cultivate that dream and that vision in his imagination that his brain would create the neural synapses that would ultimately control his body and his body would eventually have to catch up to that future map, to that future destination. And lo and behold, so it came to be, abracadabra. A lot of people don't know that the word abracadabra, I challenge you and I encourage you, I want to tell you after this video is done, Google the word abracadabra and what it means and what its origin is. What you will find out is that the word abracadabra is a Jewish word. It's a Hebrew word. I shouldn't say Jewish because people always associate Jewish with the religion. It's a Hebrew word, and Abba, Kadabra, means as I speak it, therefore it is. So as I speak it, therefore it is. So when you say, I am going to be a New York Times bestseller, Abba, Kadabra, I'm going to be a New York Times bestseller. As I speak it, therefore it is. So now you cultivate it in your imagination. I manifesting according to God's infinite creation and putting in action in my mind's eye that I'm going to be a New York Times bestseller. Next thing you know, I have the inspiration for either a book or I have a thought. I have the inspiration to write this thought down. And the next thing you know, I have a book. And then I take the measures to format that book get a cover for it, etc. Sometimes the cover will come before the book things. Uh, there's another book that I'm writing. I'm, I'm one of those, write I love to write, so I've got multiple books that I've been writing. And one of the books I'm writing is called It's As Ass Backwards As It Gets. Anyhow, um, but that's, that's really what this is all about. Everything starts in the imagination. That's where your true power lies. There are physicists that for, I know there was some sort of research study. I wish I could remember the details of it. In 1975, there were these physicists that were actually able to measure and to detect this energy that we emanate from our bodies. You know, we, we now know that we have toroidal fields that extend out nine or 10 feet in either direction. That's about three meters in either, on each, either side of us. And it's like a sphere. It's above us, above, below, to the right, to the left. It's a giant ball, a sphere of energy. And our eyes, our hands, and our mind emit a certain electromagnetic frequency and we actually you can actually feel energy that emanates from your hands oftentimes people don't realize this but sometimes your hands get really hot it's because 
you don't realize that you're a healer. You have the ability that with the energy that is being emitted from your hands, you could actually touch someone. You don't even have to touch someone. In fact, oftentimes it's even better if you don't touch someone. From a distance, you can actually focus that energy with your imagination in a particular direction for someone's highest good so that they heal in the way that the divine infinite spirit knows is for the highest good for that person and the greater good of all so that anything and everything that needs to be adjusted and moved around and healed will be done all the way down to the DNA level, sometimes not limited just to their physical body, but sometimes it goes back in their history and forward to what will be their, their um, progeny and their offspring for future generations to come. Now, it's not your monkey, not your circus to get into the nitty gritty of that. If you are aware that you have this healing energy that is upon you and it, it is um, higher than normal at a specific moment in time and a certain person comes to mind, whether you know the person or you don't, doesn't matter. Your call is to be obedient with that and to generate your, your free will. You take your free will, you focus your free will, conscious awareness on that person and you send energy to them. Uh, years ago, here's another story. This happened, it happened probably over 10 years ago maybe 15 years ago. I really don't remember what year this was, but I'll never forget it was it was definitely before 2013. And I remember waking up late at night. It was maybe like two in the morning. And I woke up and the name Veronica popped into my head. And so as I woke up, I sat up in my bed and I thought, Veronica? I don't know any Veronicas. I don't have any Veronicas in my contacts. I don't know any Veronicas. There's nobody that I know of that exists in my field of awareness named Veronica. I don't know who Veronica is, but in, in, my, in my dream, if you will, in my dream state, it was impressed upon me that I was to, I was to send healing energy to Veronica and said, I'm like, okay, I don't even really know what it is that Veronica needs in whatever shape or form, but apparently this Veronica being needed my, my maybe they, maybe Veronica was praying for help or for God. I heard Come back here. that I needed to pray for this Veronica. So I just went ahead and I sat up in my bed, I held my hands up and then I directed the energy towards Veronica. Now, the bottom line is I have no way of confirming if Veronica received a benefit from this or not, um, it doesn't matter because that was not about me. Just like it's still not about me right now. Now, later on, I ended up having a series of experience, experiences where I was complaining. I really was. I was complaining to God um, about about um, different things that were going on in my life. And I was just, just like I'm talking to you, I'm like, sitting you know on my kitchen counter on the granite countertops anyhow i'm just sitting on my granite countertops and and i'm like saying god this that and whatnot and what about this and what about this and then the next thing i heard was go do it told me to go do my i said go do your husband's laundry i said what and then i heard you hear me perfectly well and I said, I hear you perfectly well. I go, I know I hear you perfectly well, which was this particular experience. That was the whole lesson. That was the objective. The divine was trying to drill home through my dense, I'm going to call it, you know, Pachycephalosaurus, that dinosaur. It has a 10 inch thick skull. So I think that the divine was telling me, you know what? You're like a pachycephalosaurus with this 10 inch thick skull. You think you don't hear me, you hear me perfectly well. I'm gonna give you something that makes no sense whatsoever. I'm gonna tell you to do, to do your husband's laundry. What? And it, at two in the morning, to go do my, whoops. To do my husband's laundry? I'm like, Okay, so I, I'm like, okay, I'm not about to argue. So I jumped off the granite countertops, run upstairs, grabbed a load of his whites, came back downstairs, threw it, threw it in the um, 
washer dryer in the laundry room, closed the dryer, closed the door, and then went back to having my conversation with the divine. And then other things were revealed, crystal clear. So I'm like, I got it. I hear you. I hear you perfectly well. You said you hear me perfectly well. I got it. So then what happened, uh, this was like during the month of December. So then I decided I'm going to test this. Every time I see or hear or sense something, I'm going to test it. And I don't care if I appear foolish to whoever it is on the other end. I don't care. This is not about them. This is about me understanding and recognizing and um, increasing, increasing my connection with the divine. So then the next thing that happens is, of course, sorry about these kids that are talking in the background, but it's good positive energy. So anyhow, the next thing I have happen, it's about seven o'clock at night. I'm beginning to prepare dinner for my family and I had a, a, just one envelope. So I am about to prepare um, a meal for my family and I had this envelope that I needed to to mail, a piece of mail, but it wasn't really anything that particularly urgent. However, as I was starting dinner, I had this overwhelming urge to go mail it, and I thought, no, I'll just make dinner and I'll, I'll mail it after dinner. And this insidious feeling was like, no, 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 mail it now. So I'm like, whatever, okay. I'm like, I get it. That's the divine trying to tell me, go now. So I grab it, jumped into my car, drove two miles, went to the post office. As I walked into the post office, as luck would have it, there happens to be this woman who appears to be homeless to my left side. And as I'm walking, I just make a mental note of her. I'm like, oh, she's homeless. It's what I thought in my head. On my left side of my head, I actually thought, oh, she's homeless. And as I took the next step and the next step, I heard, no, she's not. And I said, no, she's not. She just lost her home. And I said, oh, she just lost her home. And I thought, wait a minute. This was clear. My thought was that she was homeless. But this voice is telling me, no, she's not homeless. She just lost her home. I said, I got to ask her. So I, I said, this is interesting. So I went and I put, I mailed the envelope. And as I walked back, I figured, you know what? I don't know her. She doesn't know me. I'm just going to ask her. So I said, listen, by chance, did you just lose your home? And then her eyes got really big and she said, yes, how did you know? And I said, it doesn't matter. I go, if I told you, you wouldn't believe me, so it doesn't really matter. I just, I just sensed that you lost your home and so I, I wanted to ask you. And she said, yes. She goes, tell me, how do you know these things? Where I come from, we believe in these things. And I said, really, it doesn't really matter how I know, honestly. If I told you, I know you wouldn't believe me, so it doesn't matter. It's, it's nonsense. It's, it's irrelevant. And she said, then she put her hand on my forearm and she said, tell me, I believe you. So I went on to tell her my story. The long story short was I asked her, I said, listen, what's your name? Again, this is the month of December. And she says, my name is Noel. And I said, of course it is. I said, my name is Lillian. Now, if you know French, you will know that the name Noel means Christmas. Joyeux, joyeux Noel is joyous Christmas. And so I immediately knew that this was another sign because her name was Noel. So I told her, listen, I said, I happen to know, or Jesus tells me things on a need to know basis. And so sometimes there are things that I have no idea why I'm supposed to know them, but he'll tell me things on a need to know basis. And so she says, Jesus? And I said, yes. She goes, Jesus, who is this Jesus? Where can I find out more about this Jesus? I said, you've never heard of Jesus? And she says, no. Um, where can I learn more about this Jesus? And so now I'm kind of surprised. Now, I could tell from her accent that she seemed to be, I don't know if she was Armenian, or she was Turkish. She was definitely, definitely from, from that part of the, the world. Maybe, maybe a certain part of Eastern Europe, perhaps, um, perhaps, like I said, Armenian. Maybe she was Damascan. Maybe she was from Syria. I'm not quite sure, but I knew that she was from that part of the world by her accent and her demeanor. I had a strong sense that she was Armenian. 
So I'm like, you haven't heard, you know, here we are in California in Huntington Beach. How could you not know who Jesus is? But she didn't know who Jesus was. So I said, listen, I gave her an address. I said, there's a group of people here. You don't need to bring any money. It doesn't matter how you're dressed. Um, that's not what this is about. Just show up there. They will receive you there with open arms, but you can just sit there. You can interact as much or as little as you want. No one's going to bug you or hound you, um, but there are there. That's where people go to learn about, like really learn about the true teachings of Jesus and about these mystical aspects of, of our reality where you can tune and tap in and turn on into his power and he'll work through you and for you for the greater good of all provided that you're you know coming from a place of love and not a malicious intent and so she took the information down and I don't know if she ever went or not because that experience for me was just confirming to me it was one other piece of evidence that I was hearing perfectly well I can keep on talking about all sorts of other events but I'm just gonna leave you with that one to show you how these things can show up in your life and you can test them and uh, in Malachi 310, Malachi, the last book of the Old Testament. It's the only Italian. Ha ha ha. No, Malachi wasn't Italian, but I call Mal Malachi Malachi just because I think it's funny. You may not think it's funny, but I think it's funny. <laughs> so anyhow, in Malachi 310, it talks about, you know, open up the storehouses of heaven. That if you bring your tithes to the divine, that he'll open up the storehouses of heaven. And yeah, he, he gives you permission to test if this promise actually works and I did test it and the promise not only worked but I had you know I could do a whole series of videos just on all these different manifestations and, and this is not here to talk about all those manifestations this is here to answer your question where you're asking very specifically I saw the future in a dream and it happened how did this happen this is how it happened this is how it's happened for me this is how it happened for you it's already happened this is how it happens for all of us so my friends and gems and this person on Quora I can't see from this I went to write the answer so I can't see the name of the person who asked the question but on YouTube I give all sorts of free information it's an online free classroom we enter interact and engage with each other if there's something more specific if you want to share a revelation if you want to share a manifestation if you want to share a wondrous exciting happening thing if you have something unwanted that you want to mold into the wanted you can do that all day long especially those days that end in what okay this video is taking way too long so I'm going to finish it right here right now thank you for tuning in tapping in to love and money secrets TV and I so absolutely love and adore to connect with you on Quora Thank you for co-creating this moment with me. And if, oh, two things. Would you upvote this on Quora? And thank you for being one of the 11.1 thousand people in the last 30 days who have read my, my answers to the questions that you folks keep on reaching out to me to ask. And thank you for also hitting like on this YouTube video, share it with somebody that you know that would appreciate this and hit that bell notification bubble so that the next time we have another YouTube video posted on Love and Money Secrets TV, you'll be notified. And you can access Love and Money Secrets TV easily by going to the URL dame, D-A-M-E, Lillian, L-I-L-L-I-A-N, walker.com and help me help you walk into learning how to put your hands on the clay and manifesting anything and everything your hearts desire. And remember, my name Lillian, if you look at my name Lillian, I have an 11 in the middle of my name. That is not just a coincidence. That's a God incidence. Ciao for now. Whoop.